Hey muchachos and muchachas, I've been getting questions about how to plot complex functions in MATLAB and that seems like a good uh, topic for our video. So let's have a go at this. I'm going to start with a quadratic equation that has complex roots and I'm going to show you how to find those roots using complex numbers. Now here's a, we're going to start with a real simple quadratic equation here. It's f of x equals 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. They hardly come simpler than that, right? Well, when you draw a picture of this, here's pretty much what you get. Okay, there's x, there's f of x, okay? And the root of an equation is where the curve of the equation crosses the x-axis, right? Well, this doesn't cross the x-axis. So you might have heard that, well, it doesn't cross the x-axis, so its roots are complex. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that, you're right, it doesn't cross if you're only looking at the real part of x. But if you look at both the real and the imaginary parts of x, it does cross. So instead of this, that's not going to work. What we've got to do is we've got to look at the rest of space. We're only looking at one little slice out of a three-dimensional space and we're not finding it there. Well, okay, there's a whole other dimension to look through. Let's do this. I'm going to show you how to do this in MATLAB. If that's x, now let's do it this way. Let's say if x is complex, then x, yeah, I'm going to get my head out of your way here, x is a plus iv. A, a is the real part of x and b is the imaginary part of x. Now, I've said in other videos, real and imaginary are absolutely the worst names ever for these. Um, when I become king of the world, uh, morning of the first day before I get thrown out of office, um, I'm going to make that something besides real and imaginary. It's going to be up and down or left and right or red and blue or something like that, top and bottom, I don't know, something. Anything but real and imaginary. Because when you say imaginary, it makes it sound like it's not a legitimate mathematical entity. It is. There's two kinds of numbers, real and imaginary. As far as I've been able to tell from talking to mathematicians, there's no other numbers out there that you need to be worried about. This is it. There's only two kinds. And most of the time, we limit ourselves to real numbers because that describes a lot of the world around us. Now, there are lots of things that we use to describe the world around us that really are cast in terms of complex numbers. Laplace transforms, Fourier transforms, most of uh, AC power, anything where there's an oscillating signal going through a wire, that's usually got complex numbers in it. So these are around all over the place, whether you know about it or not. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. Those are both completely legitimate mathematical entities. There's, there's, there's nothing to be worried about here. They just have slightly different properties is all. That's all you got to worry about. So let's make this the real part of x, which is a. Maybe the real part of it. I'm going to replace that with A, and I'm going to replace the imaginary part with B here, so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so that's real in that axis, and there's imaginary going on in that axis, and these are perpendicular to each other, or else they wouldn't be axes. And this is going to be F of X, which is really F of A plus IB. Now, here's the problem. There's two components going in as, as independent variables, the real and the imaginary. That means there's going to be two components coming out, real and imaginary. Well, if I tried to plot all that, I would get two independent variables coming in and two dependent variables coming out. That's four variables. I need four dimensions to plot that. Well, well, okay, I don't know about you. I live in three-dimensional space. I'll bet you do too. So I only know how to draw things in three dimensions. I know mathematically you can have any number of dimensions, but I live in 3D, 3D space. I don't know how to live in 4D space. I just, I'm, I'm an engineer, not a physicist. I don't know how to do that. So what I'm going to do is rather than try to deal with the, the fact that that's complex, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to find the absolute value of that. I'm going to plot the absolute value. What you're going to find out in MATLAB is this isn't just a curve anymore. Now it's a surface. And the surface is going to have these two little points that come down and touch that plane right there. Now this plane right here, sometimes that's called the real imaginary plane.
or sometimes it's called the argon. Can you see that? You guys can see that. Called the argon plane, A-R-G-A-N-D, the name of a mathematician. So once in a while you hear it called the argon plane. Um, that would be a good band name. Yeah, I, I play triangle for a real imaginary plane. Anyway, um, so with all the talking out of the way, let's go into MATLAB and let's see how to deal with this. Now I'm going to do this two ways. Number one is I'm going to push that equation through the symbolic solver, well, which is called MuPad in, Mat in uh, MATLAB, and I'm going to show that it really will give you uh, com uh, two complex roots. The two complex roots are, let's see, I'll write this out here just so you know what to expect. Let's see, x1, x equals, I'll get, again, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, minus 0 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.866i, and I just have enough room on my board here. So there we go. Those are the two roots we're going to find using the symbolic processor. And then we're going to use the surface command, or maybe even surf C, and we're going to draw a picture of it so that you can see in three dimensions, you really do go down and touch this axis. The fact that that curve doesn't work in just with the when you're plotting against A only, that doesn't matter, right? So let's go do it. All right, here we are in MATLAB, and uh, you can see the normal set of windows that shows up when you uh, fire up MATLAB. I'm using version R2018A, and uh, you may have a slightly different version, but I think everything I'm about to show you works in any reasonably new version of MATLAB. As always, if you want to change the layout, just click Layout, and you can set it up however you want. If you look in the current folder, there's uh, some M files in this folder I was playing around with, and there's uh, some command history. This is other things I was playing around with recently, including some stuff down there that didn't work as I was trying to learn how to uh, present this as cleanly as I could. So let's start here. I just typed in sims x. What that means is I've defined x as a symbolic variable. It's not a numerical variable anymore. Um, MATLAB is a little different than some other uh, number crunching packages because it maintains a uh, uh, distinction between symbolic and numerical variables that other ones kind of don't always. So there it is. Let's go ahead and type in this uh, parabola, this quadratic equation I had on the board a minute ago. There it is, and let's solve f. Now that double equal sign says make f equal to zero, and since there's only one variable, it's going to assume I want to solve for x. And there it is. There's my minus one half, and if you work that out, you get 0 0.866. So there it is. There's the two roots for the equation, and they are complex conjugates if you're keeping track of things like that. So that's correct without necessarily being helpful. Let's see if we can fix that. I'm going to type in clear. I'll clear everything out so there's nothing in the workspace anymore. X is no longer a complex variable. Now, I already know from uh, looking at this before what a good range uh, for the variables uh, I'm going to plot are. So in the uh, real direction, I'm going to go from minus 2 to 1. And for the imaginary direction, I'm going to go minus 2 to 2. All right, so let's define a, little a right there and I'm going to go from minus 2 to 1 just like I said and I'm going to step in 0 0.1 steps and let's do B as well there it is again I'm going to go from minus 2 to 2 and then my step size is going to be the same so there's that now I need to have a grid of points on the real imaginary plane so all the A's are going to be defined by this and all the B's are going to be defined by that to make a grid well I could do like a nested loop or something but there is a command called mesh grid. I'll just recall that. Mesh grid, give it A, give it B, where A and B are vectors. And it spits out A and B, where A and B are matrices. So this A and this B are the all the real locations of everything in the grid, and there's all the imaginary locations of everything in the grid. So now I have two matrices here, and you can see they're 41 by 31. Uh, a was 1 by 31, and B was 1 by 41. By the way, why is it 1 by 31 and not 1 by 30? Well, because I have a 0 in there. There is an a equals 0. That's that extra 1 that you're looking for. OK, so let's define y. There it is right there. OK, so there's everything uh, just as it was before, only everywhere I had x, I have a plus ib. And I'm using the capital letters because I want it to calculate everything in that mesh, not just along those two directions. And I'm having to put that dot right there because this is now 
a matrix. I'm trying to push a matrix through there, so I have to let it know that this is a matrix or vector going through. It's not just a number. So it'll do that. The well, last thing I need to do is let's type in surf C. Okay. And let's give it A, B, A, B, S of Y. A and B show how to label the real and the imaginary axes, scale them for us. And A, B, S of Y, I want the absolute value of Y because Y is going to be a complex number as well. And I'll let it grind. There we go. Now, I'm going to blow that up a little bit. And if you can see, if we look right down there, there's those two points. Those go down and touch the real imaginary axis. So which one's real and which one's imaginary? Well, I didn't bother to label it. Let's, let's, put, let's, let's fix that. There's a command called xlabel, so I'm going to call real. It's going in the x direction. That's my a and y label. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. There it is. Now I'm not a big fan of this color map. This is the default color map, and I like kind of a brighter one. I'm going to do this. Color map, there's one called Jet that uses bright primary colors. So I hit that, and there I get it. Okay, I like that much better. That makes for, for me that's easier to look at. If there's there's lots of different color maps. Pick whichever one you want. And the only thing I don't like right now is that contour plot right here at the bottom doesn't have enough contours on it. I wish it had more. So let's fix that too. So I'm double clicking on that. And what I get over here is that. See that says level step? Level step is MATLAB language for that's the vertical distance between contours on that contour plot that lives underneath the surface plot. And so I'm going to make it 0 0.5. There, that's much better. Okay, so I'm going to close this and unselect that. So now, there, I can zoom in and I can look around and I can see from the bottom or the top, wherever I want. And I can see what this surface looks like. Remember, this surface here, this is that parabola. This is exactly that parabola. The thing is now I'm looking at the parabola in both real and imaginary space. And uh, it now makes a surface. There, I can look at it from the top if I want. By the way, see that mesh right there? That's the mesh that Mesh Grid made for me. So there, look around a little bit more. And it's pretty obvious it touches the real imaginary plane. Let me turn that off. See if I can get the arrow here. Right there and right there. Okay. So it's there you go. Um, that parabola that has only complex solutions really does go to zero. It just doesn't do it along the real axis. So there you go. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.